Hello friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. I am so excited for today because I'm going to be starting a reading vlog where I read some different LGBTQ plus books that I have on my TBR because it's Pride Month, baby! Let's go! And I just want to emphasize that, you know, I do think it's important to be reading books like this with different representation in it all year long, but especially during Pride Month. And in this video, I not only have a few romance books selected, but I do have, you know, some other kinds of books. I do have a number of romances and then I also have, you know, a sci-fi, a thriller. Like, we've got a mixed bag of things in this video. If you are um, wondering or if you're curious, I actually do identify as asexual and if you wanted some book recommendations for Pride Month that have asexual representation that can help you understand asexuality better, I would highly recommend um, Loveless by Alice Oseman as well as The Romantic Agenda by Claire Can. And these two books uh, have different asexual representations representation in them. In this book, our main character, Georgia, is aromantic as well. And in this book, Joy is only asexual and she wants romance. And so I feel like it's really interesting because you can get two different kind of perspectives on asexuality. And, you know, asexuality is such a spectrum in general. So like not everyone is going to be the same or have the same experiences. But I personally really related a lot to both of these experiences regarding asexuality with both of these characters. So yeah, I would highly recommend checking these books out, especially during Pride Month if you can. But yeah, I'm so excited to get started with this reading vlog because I have so many books piling up that are, you know, queer books that I've been hoping to get to at some point. So I thought during Pride Month it would be the perfect time to make a reading vlog dedicated to all of these books. And the first one I'm going to be starting with is You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. So yeah, let's get to it. Oh, we've said our goodbyes, but we won't Hello, hello. How is it going? Um, I wanted to let you know that I've decided to start with the book You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty because this is a book that I've had on my TBR for quite some time now. It actually just came out in the month of May. This is one that I'm really excited to read because it's the same author as The Death of Vivek Oji, which is one of my personal favorite books ever. Like that book made me so emotional. So I was really anticipating this one as something that will probably also make me emotional. But this book is really beautiful so far. I just started it yesterday and as of now, I am 120 pages into it. I also have the audiobook from my library. So I've been following along with the audiobook and this story is really beautiful. You know, we're following this woman named Faye and five years ago, there was an accident that killed the love of her life. And so she's kind of still dealing with the grief from that situation, you know, and she has this best friend named Joy who she lives with. And then this story is kind of about her meeting this guy and thinking that she might be like opening up to the world again and like finding herself again. And you know, when I started this book, it was unclear to me um, if there were going to be any, you know, like gay characters or like any LGBT kind of characters even in this book. Um, I just saw that it was, you know, put under the genre of like LGBT books on Goodreads and so that's why I wanted to include it in this video. But now that I'm 120 pages in, I'm definitely seeing um, a couple different gay characters in this book, so that's making my heart so happy. I just got to the end of, you know, chapter 10, and like, I don't want to jump into spoilers, obviously, with the end of chapter 10, but like, god, it was beautiful, and it just like made my heart freaking soar at the end of chapter 10, so I really enjoyed that. But I don't know, I'm just really enjoying this book. I'm really enjoying the characters in this, especially like the main character. I think I have like a hunch on like where this story might be going, and I'm just here for it. So, yeah. Yeah, um, today is like a really nice, you know, rainy day. You would never assume that it's June in Washington with the weather that we've had recently. Like, it's just been really rainy and windy lately, but honestly, I'm kind of loving it. You know, like, I'm just, I love the rainy weather. And so I decided that I'm like craving vitality just like really hard this morning. Like, I woke up and I was like, I need an acai bowl today. So I'm at vitality now. I drove all the way down here just to get vitality and I'm gonna, you know, eat my acai bowl. They have a like little nice uh, water area over here. So I'm just going to eat my acai bowl by the water and just sit here in the rain in my car and just read more of this book. Like I'm hoping that I can finish it today because I'm really enjoying it. And as far as the audiobook tells me, I have about five hours left of the audiobook, but with the speed that I'm listening to it, I should be able to finish it within like two to three hours. Like right All right. The bowl has been secured. Let's do the reveal together. Oh yes. See, this is worth driving like 20 minutes for. Would you not drive 20 minutes for this bowl?
after three o'clock in the afternoon and I am home from my, you know, going out earlier today. Um, but I want to let you know that I finished reading You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty. And this book was so good. It was just so beautiful. Something that I didn't realize when I started this book is that this is actually a romance. Because for some reason, you know, I was thinking this author has previously published, you know, literary fiction books. And so I was assuming that this was going to be, you know, another literary fiction. So I didn't realize when I started reading this book that this actually is a romance. I mean, it does feel a little bit literary fiction. It doesn't feel like as like, you know, mainstream romance as some of the romances that I'm probably used to, but amazing. Like I didn't realize that this was actually a romance book. And so this book definitely went in the direction that I thought that it was going, but I just really enjoyed it. Like I really enjoyed these characters. I really enjoyed the protagonist in this book. I loved the discussion like about her grief and how, you know, those feelings never really go away. It just gets easier to deal with on a daily basis. I also love the way that this author kind of writes these, you know, kind of taboo, kind of forbidden romances. I just think that's something that this author does really well because I don't want to spoil you like who the romance is with in this book, but it was a little bit unexpected for me, at least at the start of this book. Like I did not see it going in that direction. And then I was like, oh shit, like, okay, that's what's happening in this book. And I am here and it was good. You know, it was forbidden. It was kind of juicy. It was like there was like steamy sex scenes like I just wasn't expecting it to be as romance heavy as it was but I also really enjoyed that about it and I don't know I feel like I'm gonna have to give this book four stars there were some things that I thought were like a little repetitive like once we did get into the romance there was like a few times where I felt like the plot wasn't really moving at least like not as quickly as I wanted it to it felt like we were just spending a lot of time uh, you know, with the couple, which was fine. It's just, there were some slower bits for me. Like, it wasn't like a five-star book. I mean, at least, you know, if I had to compare it to The Death of Yvek Oji, which is also by this author, because, you know, this was a hands-down five-star book for me. Like, one of my absolute favorites made me bawl my eyes out reading this book. So I guess it's safe to say that I went into this one with a little bit of high expectations, but God, this author did not disappoint. Like, I think this author is such an incredible writer. I highly recommend checking out the audiobooks because the audiobooks are just fantastic and they add so much to the experience for me. But wow, I would definitely recommend this book. I do think this book also has one of the most beautiful book titles that I've ever seen in my life. Like, you made a fool of death with your beauty? What? Who says things like that? Like, that's gorgeous. That's beautiful. So yeah, anyways, so happy that I finally read that book. And then as soon as I got home, I finished the book, like, as I was on the drive home. Right when I got home, I was responding to some emails and making some thumbnails on my laptop and, you know, setting up scheduling posts on Patreon and doing all kinds of stuff that I could do some work while listening to an audiobook. So I have been listening to Home Field Advantage on audio and I'm about like 42% of the way through this already. And this is one that I was hoping to read for this video because this is a young adult female female romance and it's actually about how there's a cheerleader, like one of the girls is the cheerleader, like the head cheerleader, and then the other girl is the quarterback on the football team, which like how freaking cool is that? And the girl that's the quarterback is like new to the school and so it's kind of this thing where she's like the new girl and nobody really knows her and her name is Jack. So like they all assumed at first that she was a boy and then she was like, no bitch. So far, you know, it's cute. Um, it's reading a little young, which you know can be expected. It's actually reminding me um, a lot of this other book that I read last year. I think it was called like She Drives Me Crazy or like something like that. It's reminding me quite a bit of that book for some reason. But yeah, I'm definitely planning on continuing with this book. Me and Rachel so made mac and cheese. My favorite. And asparagus. And bacon. your family cause they never showed you love. God, this shit is beautiful. Hello, good morning. It's a Saturday morning, and I wanted to let you know that last night I finished listening to the audiobook for Home Field Advantage. This audiobook was really short. It was only about seven hours long, so it only took me like a few, you know, listens before I was able to get through the whole thing. And to be honest, I feel like this book was fine, you know? I feel like I went in with a little bit too high of expectations because I just saw this cover, you know, and I just assumed that I was gonna love it and like I just love you know like young adult female female romances like they're so like hit or miss and I feel like this one was just average for me 
it's probably gonna end up being like a three out of five or so because I can think of a number of other young adult female female romances that I would recommend over this one. But this one was fine, you know, we're following this young girl named Amber who's a cheerleader and then the other girl Jack is a quarterback and I do love, you know, taking this trope of like the cheerleader and the quarterback but making it with like two girls instead. Like I love that kind of twist in a book. I think that's so cute. But there are just some things with this book. Like, I don't know, I feel like at times it was hard for this book to find the balance of being cute and then also being really serious at times because sometimes their school, like this high school could be so homophobic and it was just really hard to read about at times. And I feel like, I don't know, at least for me, the book was trying to make it feel like more lighthearted than it needed to be at times. I think something that was, you know, really interesting about this story is that, you know, Jack was going to be new to this school and she was replacing this quarterback who died. Like the quarterback that was there before this guy had died. And so it was kind of like more serious. Like the school wasn't really, you know, not only were they like kind of annoying because she's a girl, you know, being the quarterback at the school, but they're also kind of mad because it's almost like she's replacing this guy who died and it's just like this awkward thing but I do think it added like an interesting element to the story of her trying to deal with that situation but I did appreciate you know the conversation about like sexuality and how you don't really have to label yourself and like be a certain way to fit into any kind of group like I liked the discussion in general about sexuality and I think it's a really important conversation for young readers to see but at the same time like I don't know this book just didn't give what I was hoping it would give you know like I just wanted a cute young adult romance and I feel like I just never really got that from this like these two were like fine together I just never really felt any like burning chemistry the way that I wanted to with them and I feel like especially towards the second half of the book it just got way too much heavy into like the young adult drama where it was just feeling like a little young you know it was feeling like I'm too old to be reading this and let's move on. <laughs> so, I don't know, it was probably a three out of five. You know, as I said, this isn't super memorable for me. Like I honestly, just this morning I woke up and I was like, what was the main character's name again? Like I had to double check on my phone because I couldn't even remember. So that is how forgettable <laughs> the story is for me. So, anyways, it's Saturday. It's about like 12.30 in the afternoon right now. I just got back from going to my local coffee shop and I was planning on, you know, curling my hair because I washed my hair last night. And so it's just kind of like a bushy mess as of right now. And so I was planning on curling my hair really fast. And then while I'm curling my hair, I thought I would start The Darkness Outside Us because I do have this book checked out from my library right now, the audiobook, and that's going to be expiring in about 10 days. So like I need to get on this. And this is one that I am very excited about because it's like a young adult, um, you know, gay space kind of book. Um, all I know on the back here just says two boys that are alone in space and they're sworn enemies sent on the same rescue mission. And I've heard mostly good things from my friends about this book. So I'm just so in the mood right now, like for a young adult sci-fi, like let's freaking go. I'm also excited because a little bit later this afternoon, I'm going to be doing reading sprints with my friend Ashley over on her channel. So I'm going to be uh, hopefully continuing this book if I'm enjoying it. But yeah, for now, I'm going to curl my hair and I shall be back. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon now and as you can see I have curled my hair, I've changed, and I've just kind of been sitting here for a while listening to this audiobook while I've been getting some things done on my laptop. I, you know, recently I was just hosting an audiobook giveaway in my Instagram stories, so I was like contacting the winners and getting their emails and emailing them the audiobook redemptions and things like that, but I'm excited to let you know that I'm already 138 pages into The Darkness Outside Us, and I'm really enjoying this. I didn't really know what this book was about going into it. I just saw the description said two boys alone in space and I was like that is all that I need to know like I am excited and this book is really interesting because Ambrose he wakes up on this spaceship and he has no memory of the launch and he just doesn't really know what's going on it's really weird because there's like 
kind of like an AI, like a voice operating system, like talking to him on the ship and the voice is using his mother's voice, which is kind of like weird, but also kind of interesting. And he begins to realize that his mission on this ship is to rescue his sister, which is pretty intense, but he starts to realize, you know, as he's like unlocking different things in the ship, he starts to realize that he's not alone on the ship and he's like, what the heck is going on? And there's this other boy that's on the ship and it's really great because his roommate has like absolutely no interest in getting to know him or even knowing anything about him and he prefers just kind of like isolating himself on the ship. And so it's already creating this like really great dynamic, you know, where our main character Ambrose is kind of like, hey, like, like we should be teaming up and we should be figuring things out together and you know his roommate is kind of like no like I'm fine being alone and like I don't really want anything to do with you and I don't know I already kind of like this like tension that's happening between them you know because I think Ambrose is afraid of being lonely you know like he's afraid of being like not really knowing what he's even doing on this ship in the first place and he's just really confused and he like needs a friend but I kind of like the way that you know this other character his roommate is just kind of like shrugging him off and not really wanting anything to do with him like it's just creating a really cute dynamic between them that I really enjoy and now that I'm about 138 pages in it's starting to pick up on like you know the mystery and like the suspense that's going on in this book it's starting to pick up the pace you know so I'm excited to see where this is going um, I'm gonna be starting my reading sprints with Ashley in about 30 minutes and so until then um, I'm just gonna continue listening to this on audio and hopefully get a decent chunk of this book done today because it's reading very fast something that I did notice though is that there's not really any chapter breaks like these chapters like I've been reading the same chapter this entire time as far as I'm aware um, but it does have these little like breaks within the chapter that's like this many tasks left and so it's kind of easy to like break it up in that way but there's no actual like chapter breaks but I can see coming up in a little bit there's going to be a part two so it's interesting that this entire first part of the book is all you know one chapter like there's no chapter breaks in this section so I think the book is just going to be broken up into different parts that are going to be like hundreds of pages long each but you know what it's fine I don't really mind it as much when I'm listening to audiobooks if there's like long chapters because I don't tend to notice it as much It's about just a bit after four o'clock in the afternoon and I'm still doing reading sprints right now, but I wanted to update you because I'm now 228 pages into this book and I'm not gonna lie, you know, after part one, like the end of part one was so intense and I was just like, what the fuck is going on? Like what, what? Part two was starting and I was like, okay, I'm so confused. I don't know what's going on, but now I feel like I just got a bunch of info dumping, like heavy sci-fi info dumping about like what is actually happening and I am so intrigued by this like what the fuck am I reading right now I feel like you know at the beginning it was more romance focused or like the romance was more like prominent at the beginning of this story and I was like really invested you know I was like I am shipping these two boys like they they just have this really great tension but then slowly towards the end of part one you know the mystery and the action starts to pick up and it starts to feel more like you know sci-fi and honestly like uh the narrators on this audiobook like he's narrating them to sound so much older like especially the love interest which his name is Kodiak by the way and I'm like that is literally the coolest name I've ever heard in my life and then after part two has began it's just been really heavy sci-fi and I feel like this book is reading so much more like an adult book than I was expecting like this doesn't read like YA at all to me like besides the fact that the main character is 17 and then the love interest I think is 18 other than that like I would not be able to tell like if you had told me that these characters were in their 20s I would be like yeah that makes sense and I don't really understand why this book is being marketed as young adult because it's not reading like young adult at all which is actually fantastic like I'm actually so here for this but holy shit I just got to like all of the reveals and my brain is just spinning like I can't like this happens every time I read sci-fi like I feel like whenever reveals happen and there's a lot of sci-fi things in a row my brain just starts spinning and I'm like okay I'm trying to keep up with like all of the twists because I can't even deal with this but like wow I'm loving it I'm loving it so much more more than I thought I would. So this is fantastic. I'm so glad I bought this book. They're so cute. I'm like literally blushing. 
I adore them. Oh my god. This freaking book right now. All right, hello. It is nearly six o'clock. We just wrapped up sprints over on Ashley's channel, which was so much fun. Like Ashley's so much fun and I just love hanging out with her. And I'm so glad that we got to do these sprints. On sprints, I got all the way up to page 300. So I literally only have like a sliver of about 90 pages left. And I am still really enjoying this. I'm just like loving the romance in this so much. Like I'm shipping them so hard. And the sci-fi in this book is just really interesting. You know, it's, it's like on that brink where it's like almost too much for my small brain to understand, but it's just right enough that it's like, it's not too much to the point where I'm like so confused. It's just like a little confused, but mostly because there's still so much mystery involved in the story that I don't even think that I have all the pieces of the puzzle yet. Like I'm really enjoying this. I feel like this book is so underrated, you know, cause like me and Ashley were talking about it. I was like, I don't think I've seen anybody talking about this book. It came out last summer. I think the only person I saw that has read this book is Kayla over from Books and Lala. I'm pretty sure she gave it like four stars or she, she gave it a pretty good review from what I remember. But otherwise, I just haven't seen anybody talking about this and I just don't understand why because it's so good. Okay, hello. It is the next afternoon and I finished listening to The Darkness Outside Us. This story was so beautiful. It was so good. I feel like in my soul, I need to give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. And you might be surprised by that rating. I don't know. I feel like for me, it wasn't like, it didn't give me that five star feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes when I read a five star, I just know it in my soul and in my bones and I just freaking obsess over it. But this is a solid 4.5. Like this is a book that I really, really enjoyed. I would highly recommend. This is my perfect kind of sci-fi book, you know? Like I just love sci-fi that's kind of like light sci-fi. It's not like too freaking much and it has a really great romance happening in it. Like I was just really invested. I also love the fact that this ended up reading more like adult to me. Like this just didn't really feel like young adult, which was a very pleasant surprise, you know? <laughs> I feel like a little sad that I feel like because this book reads more adult, I feel like this book is kind of being mismarketed because I feel like the audience that would really love this book is probably not going to want to pick it up because they're going to assume, you know, kind of like I did, that it might be too young for them or that it might read like a cheesy young adult sci-fi, but it's really not like that at all. Like this is not like any other young adult sci-fi book that I've ever read. And I just hope that this book, you know, finds the right audience because like there are so many people that would probably love this that read more like heavy sci-fi and like adult sci-fi. And I just hope they would give something like this a chance because it's so freaking good And like the ending was surprising too I feel like this book had so much up its sleeve like after part two things really pick up in this book And there are just so many twists and things that I did not see coming and the way this story ends was just so beautiful and so touching And I just was not expecting that either and I am just very floored and surprised by how much I enjoyed this. I had such a good time. Also, I know I said this before, but the name Kodiak, you know, it's just so freaking cool. I don't think I've ever heard that name in a book before. And now I'm obsessed. Like, I just love that name. I think it's so freaking cool. But anyways, wow, what a freaking win. I was not expecting to love this one as much as I did. Anyways, this afternoon, I've been so busy today. Like me and my sister went grocery shopping this morning. We recorded our podcast episode and then I've been laying in bed finishing this book. And now I probably have to edit another video for YouTube. And there's just a lot going on today but I'm hoping that at some point later today I can start the next book that I'm hoping to read for this video. It is the next morning and last night I spent a lot longer of a time than I thought I would editing that monthly vlog. It took me quite some time but then while I was starting to work on the thumbnail and you know responding to emails and getting other things done, I started the audiobook for Chef's Kiss last night by TJ Alexander and I've been pretty excited you know to read this one because all I really knew about it is that we'd be following 
a chef whose professional goals are interrupted by an unexpected career transition and the introduction of her wildly attractive non-binary kitchen manager. And last night I was able to just sit there and read this for quite some time while I was doing other things, getting dinner ready and all that. And so I, I'm almost halfway through it. I'm at page 128. And so far I think this book is cute. You know, I'm not gonna lie, the main character Simone, it took a minute for her character to grow on me. Like I, don't know, I just didn't really connect with her character right away. There is quite a bit more uh, queer rep in this book than I was expecting because not only is the uh, kitchen manager non-binary but then our main character Simone she's also bisexual and there's a lot of conversation about that as well because she's been you know rejected by past lovers because they're like oh you're bisexual so you're not a real lesbian or they try to act like bisexuality isn't a real thing which is so frustrating I don't know I kind of like you know the way that they're always in the kitchen it's kind of like a not like an office romance, but it kind of feels that way because they're always like working together. And I love the way like food has been involved with like their romance so far. Like I think the inclusion of like them both cooking a lot in the kitchen and like making each other meals and like suggesting things to make the meals better. I just think they have some really cute tension going on. I also do like the inclusion of, you know, they're trying to make this like YouTube series of like quick videos on like how to cook certain things. And Sim Simone is just like, so against the idea of like social media and she doesn't really understand the hype with social media she doesn't really understand how youtube works but you know as someone who is on youtube you know um i'm finding it to be very interesting so yeah i don't know i'm enjoying it so far i'm curious to see where it goes and i think you know if i had to compare this one to love and other disasters i think i'm enjoying this one a little bit more and the only reason why i'm comparing them is because not only do they both involve you know like food and like working in with food and on a restaurant and all that kind of stuff, but it also involves the love interest being non-binary. So I just feel like the stories are very similar, but I feel like I'm enjoying the chemistry more with these characters. And I don't know, I'm enjoying the writing quite a bit more in this one. So yeah, that is the update. Um, anyways, today is a kind of busy day. I mean, I don't know, I'm doing laundry right now. I'm washing all of the bedding, as you can see, tank doesn't really care and I'm gonna be filming two videos today and I have to edit one of them today so I don't know when I'm gonna get the chance to read yet but I'm enjoying chef's kiss like how amazing is that and I think during any downtime that I have today when I'm not you know filming or editing I'm just gonna pop in the audiobook and just continue this one <laughs> Cut up all these veggies over here. We got avocados, onions, and tomatoes. Ooh, uh, cut up the chicken into smaller little pieces and then toss them in the pan with onions and cilantro, yeah, and garlic. So, oh my god, hopefully it's fire. Wow, turned out stunning. We just have rice on the bottom that Rachel made. It's like a chicken broth rice kind of and then we have the chicken um fresh avocado fresh tomato and then some cheese on top what is it called cottage 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 cheese so beautiful and a sprite because of course <laughs> next morning and this morning I woke up to the worst news this morning BTS announced that they're taking a break which is just cool I feel like I'm so cursed you know because like I just got into them and I was literally just watching their like the little proof live show that they did last night before bed and I feel like I was just talking about how in my recent vlog like BTS has given me so much to look forward to like I know obviously they're deserving of a break and obviously like it's not the end of the world because they're still gonna be together but like oh my gosh like what are the chances that I just now started getting really into them in these last few months and now they decide to take a break. Anyways, I'm sad. It's fine. But I wanted to let you know that last night I was able to finish listening to Chef's Kiss on audio. I pretty much just laid in bed for the rest of the night after watching the BTS Proof Live and I finished it. This was kind of hard to read at times, a little bit more than I was expecting it to be because of the, um, you know, like the staff at this place where these characters work at can be very like homophobic and transphobic at times and that was something that I wasn't really anticipating like I don't know it's like you never know you know when you read these like 
you know, cute looking contemporary romance books, you never really know how dark they're going to get. Not that it's necessarily like dark, it's just, it's uncomfortable to read about such homophobia and transphobia like surrounding these characters. But I really did um, love the romance that happened between these two characters. I feel like they just had really good chemistry and I really felt so much for them and oh my god is this book a slow burn or what the heck because I swear like literally nothing actually happens between them until near the 90% mark of the audiobook or even further in I was like wow are we ever actually gonna get anything happening between these two like this is the definition of a slow burn in my opinion and I feel like with this book too you know it's a lot of miscommunication on their part about how they're feeling you know with both of them like going back and forth like they never know how the other person feeling about them and you know even with this book like it takes a long time in this book before Ray even comes out to Simone as being non-binary and so for a lot of the book you know Simone doesn't even know that I don't know I feel like they had a really great chemistry though it just took a long time before things actually happened with them and to be honest Simone she's not my favorite character that I've ever followed in a romance like to be honest she kind of drove me nuts sometimes and like sometimes she would just say things and like just to think before you say words like would it be so hard like she just opens her mouth and talks before she even thinks about some things and it just kind of drove me crazy in that way. I don't know. I mean, overall, I actually really did enjoy this one. I know I sound like I'm complaining quite a bit, but I would probably give this like a 3.5 to 4 stars. Like I really did enjoy it. I thought they had a really cute romance happening in this book. There were some really cute scenes where um, Simone was kind of forced to take care of Ray for reasons that I won't like spoil for you, but those scenes were very precious and will like stand out in my memory for a long time. Like they were just really adorable. I do think I want to try to get to one, at least one more book for this reading vlog. I, I do still have a number of books that are like LGBT books that I'm trying to read for Pride Month, but at least for the duration of this vlog, I would like to read one more. And I just got the audiobook um, from my library for this book called Breaking Character by Lee Winter. And this is one, I've literally had this book sitting on my shelves for quite some time. This one is a female female romance. And all I really know is that this author writes a ton of really you know well-known popular female female romances and I haven't read any of them but I've been wanting to read her books for a really long time now so I'm like okay what better time than now I didn't even know that my library had her books on audio until very recently so when I saw this book on there I just put it on hold immediately and the hold came through today so I feel like it's a sign from the universe that this book is meant to happen and all I know about this book is that it follows the icy British A-lister Elizabeth Thornton, Thor Thornton. She's America's most hated villain and she stars in top rated TV medical drama that she hates. And now she's romantically linked to her new co-star Summer. And I guess Elizabeth is a closeted actress. I don't know, I love um, books that involve like actors and actresses and like the behind the scenes of that kind of life. And I also love the idea that I think it's gonna be some kind of like fake dating scenario or like they get romantically linked but they're not actually together so this could be a new fave like I have high hopes for this so I'm gonna get started on this one today let's do it hello hello it is almost two o'clock in the afternoon now and I've only gotten 10% of the way into the audiobook because then I decided that I needed to FaceTime Olivia because I've been wanting to FaceTime her because I've been uh getting all these ideas for our next you know ween readathon and so I wanted to like run them by her and run by some like merch ideas by her and I was like I was like the phone call should only take like 15 minutes and then of course you know me and Olivia are like on FaceTime for like an hour and 20 minutes just talking <laughs> I swear I love that girl so freaking much and we plan to do some reading sprints tomorrow and then while we were on um you know the chat she was like you have to try this Starbucks drink and so now I'm gonna go to Starbucks to try this Starbucks drink because it's a brown sugar shaken espresso with oat milk and then two pumps of toffee nut because I'm a huge fan of toffee nut and so she was like you have to try it and so now we're gonna go try it and see if it's lit i was here to pick up an order okay sorry this angle is you know trash because my freaking steering wheel is in the way but look at this oh she's a beaut um i forgot to get a straw i don't think i need it though right that's what these sippy cups are for <gasps> oh, let's try it oh my god bitch oh wow that shit is so good Oh my god, it's the toffee nut. The toffee nut. Wow, okay. In in Olivia, we trust in coffee recommendations. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, this might be like a new favorite. <laughs> so thank you, Olivia. Thank you. Amazing. If you have any other recommendations, hit a girl up. 
Much later in the night, it is just after 11 o'clock now, but I wanna let you know that today I have been trying like all day to read Breaking Character. I was listening to this on audio earlier today and I am just not connecting with this right now for whatever reason. I don't know if it's a book, I don't know if it's me, but I'm just like not in the mood to read this right now. And I don't know if it's just like I'm burnt out on romance at the moment or I'm just not in the mood to read something like this. So for now, I'm going to set it aside. If you're wondering, I did get 126 pages into it. It's, you know, it's just one of those things where like sometimes like, I don't know if it's the characters, I don't know if it's the book, I don't know if it's just, you know, romance right now that I'm not in the mood to read, but there's just something about this book and I'm just not connecting with it. So instead of putting myself into a reading slump, I just decided to pick up one of the other books that I'm hoping to read this month, which is So Happy For You by Celia Lasky. And this is one that I was hoping to get to this month because this one also involves a gay main character. We're following this woman named Robin in this book and I'm pretty sure she's lesbian. It hasn't really clarified specifically, I think what her sexuality is quite yet. But yeah, I'm about 60 pages in. I literally, oh my gosh, okay. I was just sitting there tonight starting this book and I was like, I'll just read like the beginning of it and I am obsessed oh my gosh can you see can you even see um, all the tabs I have made in this book so far like I am fucking loving this I was not expecting to love it as passionately as I am right away but this book is just so entertaining okay because I was definitely in the mood for a thriller okay like this is a thriller all it says on the back here is that it's a wedding weekend that spirals out of control in this electrifying novel about the complexities of friendship. We're following our main character is named Robin and she is best friends with this woman named Ellie. And you know, they used to be really close like best friends when they were back in high school, but you know, years have passed, they're in their thirties now and she's just starting to feel like they're not as close as they used to be because they disagree on a lot of things that really, you know, matter to her. Like they disagree on, you know, politics and like religion and just like a lot of things that like mean a lot to Robin, you know? And it's cool because Robin is also a professor at a college and she te she teaches like feminist theory and all these cool things. So she's like, you know, a pretty hardcore feminist and she's pretty hardcore in her opinions and her beliefs. And the first line of this book just says, if you want to know the story of how my best friend and I ended up trying to kill each other, I should probably start with the night she asked me to be her maid of honor. Like, is that not one of the best opening lines of a book you've ever heard? Oh my gosh, and I'm just, loving it so much. Like I've already been like highlighting and underlining so much in this book because I'm finding this protagonist to be so incredibly relatable. Like literally so relatable. One of the most relatable characters I've ever read. Not only because of her, you know, beliefs on like, you know, marriage and like religion. And like, there's just so much that I see of myself in her. Like the way she is kind of like an extreme feminist, but she's also like the way she's very opinionated, you know? And she's like not afraid to voice her opinions. And like the way she's talking talking about these like straight couples that she's friends with. Like I just feel this in my soul. The way she's talking about how she like hates when bridal parties consisted of straight women who loved romantic comedies named after holidays, gender reveal parties, living in small towns near their parents for the free babysitting, floppy hats, Bible verse tattoos, long dresses to cover the kangles they didn't actually have but constantly talked about, using the word blessed unironically, and fighting in public with their husband about who did more chores but calling him their best friend in date night posts posted on social media. I love the way too that you know this character is talking about how like a lot of times people don't even really think they want to get married or like do people actually want to get married most of the time or is it really just society pressuring couples into thinking that that's something that they have to do like I just really love that conversation that's happening in this book a lot and our main character like she really dives deep into this conversation of like what really is the point of marriage and I just really appreciate the discussion you know I think it's really interesting I also really love how like brutally honest this main character is so far you know because she even has things where she's like she's saying that she's afraid for her students to ask her specific things because she's like I'm afraid that they'll ask me something that I don't know and that I'm gonna just stand up there looking like an idiot and like that would always be one of my biggest fears if I was ever gonna be a professor I would be so scared to get a comment that I didn't know the answer to or like to get a question that you're not sure about and trying to like stand up there and ex and you know not look like an idiot in front of all of these students and I just love how honest that is like I just love this character so much I love her conversation I'm at this point right now 
now because I'm about 60 pages in where she's having this conversation with her therapist and her therapist is like, why do you feel devastated by disagreements? And she's like, I guess because I take them personally. And the therapist is like, even if the disagreement isn't about something to do with you personally. And she's like, my opinions are personal to me. And she says, so you see your opinions as an extension of yourself. And she's like, doesn't everyone, what are we other than our opinions? And the therapist is like, okay, well, some might say that we're defined by our thoughts and our actions or our social role. And she's like, yeah, but aren't all of those things based on our opinions? I love this main character so much. She's just so brutally honest. She's so smart with her words, you know, and she like just makes people question things that they believe in, but like in a really smart way. Like, I don't know, I'm just really on board with this. Like I was expecting it to be even more about their friendship, but honestly, so far it's more been about, you know, Robin's life so far and Robin's kind of upbringing and her thought process and kind of like how they became friends in high school. Like we do get to see a bit of that. And I'm just loving this so much. Like I literally was not expecting to love it so much when I started it because I was like, okay, this book sounds cool. Haven't really seen any of my friends talk about it though. And I was like, I don't really know what to expect. And I'm just so glad that I'm loving it as much as I am, you know, because when I saw this book, I was like, you know, the premise sounds cool. It sounds like something I could enjoy, but like I haven't seen any of my friends talk about this book and I just haven't seen that many reviews coming in in general, you know, cause this just came out on June 7th. And so I was like, okay, well, I mean, I have hopes, but I don't want to get too high of hopes because I don't know what to expect with something like this. And and I'm just so glad that I'm loving it already as much as I am. Like this has restored my faith in like why I read books. I'm just loving it. So yeah, not to be dramatic, but um, yeah, I'm 60 pages in. I'm gonna try to read more tomorrow during my reading sprints that I'm doing with Olivia. Okay, hi, it's the next morning. I'm currently doing reading sprints on Patreon with Olivia and then Katie has also joined us. So it's a whole ass party now and I am jumping back into so happy for you. Um, I only read a few pages during like the little bit of that last sprint. And so yeah, jumping back in, very excited. that we're finally having the chance to catch up because it's been a very busy day and just very, very much going on today, you know? It's 11 o'clock at night now, but earlier today, I did reading sprints on my Patreon for five hours with Katie and Olivia. Katie ended up joining us about like halfway through or like a little more, like after like we were only live for like an hour, Katie ended up joining us and we all were all just hanging out all day. Like it was so freaking great. Like honestly, like I just love hanging out with them so much. And it was really fantastic because while I was on sprints, I got all the way up to page 204 of So Happy For You. And I am still really freaking enjoying this book. Like I just think it's so good. If you are curious, I was reading <laughs> another book. I was reading The Children on the Hill while I was on the sprints as well. So I didn't only get to page 205 hours of reading sprints, but yeah, I'm still really loving this. You know, I feel like if you go into this book thinking that it's going to be a thriller, I think you might be a little bit disappointed just because it is kind of like a slower burn, at least in my opinion. Like we definitely get a lot of flashback chapters to when these girls were, you know, first becoming friends. We kind of see like their early years of college and how there's always kind of been this like weird tension between them and their lives and how they've always had these like differences, but they were always trying to be so similar. And I don't know, I'm just really loving this book though, because not only do I find their friends friendship to be just absolutely fascinating. Like they're just, I love when books explore kind of like toxic female friendships. Like I just love it. And like, you know, nothing is more like heartbreaking than when you get really fucking close with another girl and then it all just kind of like falls apart in the most nasty way. Like it is just so entertaining for me to read for some reason, even though it sucks because I relate to it in some ways. Like I've had some really close friendships that have fallen apart, that have completely fallen apart like this. So it's also kind of like, like 
intense for me to read, but I'm just loving it so much. Like, I'm just really relating um, to this protagonist a lot. I, I get where she's coming from. I think sometimes she's a little aggressive about, you know, her beliefs, and I think sometimes she can tone it down just a little bit, but at the same time, like, I totally understand her, you know, and I get where she's coming from. I've been there before. I don't know. I'm really enjoying it, and I'm really curious to see where it's going in this last little bit here. I don't know if I'm gonna read any more tonight, you know, um, after the reading sprints, uh, I went out to dinner with Rachel and Obed. We went to this pizza place that we really love in downtown, and then we ended up hitting up Lowe's on the way back because we got my dad a gift for Father's Day, and then when I came home, I ended up watching three episodes of This Is Us with my mom because she's never actually really seen the show. Like, she's seen bits and pieces, but she's never seen the show all the way through, so she started it from the very beginning, and it was a freaking trip watching the first three episodes of This Is Us again. Like, oh my god, that show just makes me cry endlessly. Also, when I got home, I was so excited because freaking Proof by BTS, their album, was in the mail waiting for me. I was like, where the heck is this album? Like, because I pre-ordered this shit and it took so long to get here. But like, oh my god, it's amazing. And I freaking, I got Jungkook and Jin. So like, my heart is just so happy. Isn't this just one of the best photos of him? Like, I cannot deal with this. It's going on the bulletin board. Hello, how's it going? It's the next morning and I wanted to let you know that I just finished reading so happy for you. This book, it's gotta be five stars for me. Like, it just has to be five stars. But I will warn you that I don't think this is a book for everyone. You know, I don't think this book is gonna be a book that is widely loved by people because this book I would only recommend to a specific group of people. And I think the reason why I'm giving this five stars is because I thought it was entertaining as fuck. I thought it was so freaking good. From like 60% until the end of the book is when it really got like thrillery, you know, because as I was even saying last night, I was like, I don't really think this is much of a thriller, you know, or at least if it is, it's very slow burn. But oh my god, these characters become unhinged by the end of this book and the things that were happening, I was like, bitch, what the fuck? Like, this is crazy. And so I personally loved it. I think some people though are gonna think that this is like way over the top. I think a lot of people aren't really gonna like these characters, but I personally love reading about kind of like toxic female friendships like this. I love getting into the minds of these women and just kind of seeing how they operate as friends and seeing how kind of toxic they can be towards each other sometimes because of how close they are to each other. I also love the conversation in this book about weddings in general and how crazy some women get over like wedding planning and how ridiculous it all kind of is and just like the discussion about weddings in general and like you know all the ridiculous traditions and things that go into weddings. I feel like I would only recommend this to you if you either a love reading about kind of like toxic female friendships like if that's something you really enjoy reading, then I would definitely recommend this because this definitely has that, you know, it's got that like mean girls vibe where you just kind of get to explore a female friendship that's not exactly great, but it's just very toxic and they're both, they both contribute toxic things to this friendship. And then I would also recommend it to you if you're the kind of person who thinks weddings are a little bit, you know, ridiculous and over the top and you kind of laugh at brides who become bridezillas who just want the most perfect wedding, the most perfect day, even though it's literally only like, one day in their life and I've never been the kind of person as much as I love weddings because like I even mention all the time that I love reading books about weddings and I love going to weddings but I would never be the kind of person that would care that much about a wedding as much as that as crazy as that is to say because of how much I do enjoy weddings I literally like tabbed the hell out of this because anything that was kind of like personally relatable for me I tabbed it with a pink thing and then anything that I thought was like some great commentary about society and how we're kind of brainwashed into caring about things like weddings. Um, I tabbed it with like the green ones there. I also have like a random moment that I thought was like genuinely so creepy. Like there was some stuff happening towards the end of this book. As I said, you know, and I was like, bitch, what the fuck am I reading right now? Like things get really unhinged and just chaotic towards the end of this book. And I just wasn't expecting for it to get that like intense at the end because the beginning had been so slow. So I just loved it. I just just loved it so much and I'm gonna be thinking a lot about the conversations that these characters had you know I think this is one of the most relatable main characters that I've read in a long time I don't know what that says about me because I feel like this main character if you read this you might think she's kind of an asshole and like I can totally see that but I also kind of relate to some of her anger you know her anger towards people that have like different opinions with her that she finds to be problematic and her 
you know, the way she forces herself to bite her tongue during conversations where she disagrees with people. Like, I just really related to a lot of the things. And especially with, like, this friendship, you know, I definitely have friends where I've fallen out of friendships for different reasons. And it just reminded me of some of the toxic friendships that I've had in my teenagehood. I am just floored and amazed, you know, because when I started this book, I did not think that I was going to love it as much as I did. So, like, holy shit, a five star amazing! Isn't it so great, too? Because for this whole reading vlog, I feel like everything that I've read for this reading vlog, I enjoyed a lot for the most part. Like, I think the one that I enjoyed the least was actually that um, other young adult audiobook that I listened to. But luckily, that's not one of the books that I own. So now I have four more solid LGBT recommendations. What's up? Yeah, I'm really excited about all of these books that I've read and you know It's just been a really great pride month overall so far, you know, as I said at the beginning of this vlog I think that it's important to be reading books like this all year long But especially during pride month and I'm so glad that I found some new favorites like what the heck so happy for you Probably just made it into my top 10 of the year Like who would have thought that that is going to be a wrap on this reading vlog So thank you so much for watching and for hanging out if you've read any of these books that I read in this video video, please let me know your thoughts on them and let me know what pride books you've been reading during pride month. I would love to know if you have any other recommendations, leave them down in the comments, please. And thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I'll see you soon. Bye.